All right, welcome back to your balanced diet of Teletainment. Now, just yesterday was International Youth Day, and the theme for yesterday's celebration, now safe places for the youth. That now why we get this cardiac guest in the house to talk about how can we secure a safe place for the youth to be able to express yourself, participate in decision-making, and also be involved in our polity. We get two kind of people for here. We get the executive director of OVL Foundation, Victor Lanio, and also Onilola Scott Ibene, um, the acting executive secretary. Good to have you in the house. It's good to be here. Thank you. How was the rain this morning? I, I see you like trying to be a little bit like covered. How was the rain? Very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll start with you, sir. That's um, not friendly. <laughs> I know, right? Tell us about your foundation. What do you think your foundation be all about? So basically, we are focused on empowering women, youth, and children. Okay. Economically, to, for them to live an economically productive life. So how long is the foundation done they? Uh, like two years. Two years. Well, what did bring about the, the, the birth of this foundation? What did happen? Let me ask a gorgeous lady right here. What did happen? What did bring about the birth of the foundation? Okay. Um, the founders have always been um, very passionate about the plight of young people and of women and children. If you notice, um, it's women and children that suffer most um, in society. So what can we do to provide a solution. There's always a gap. There are so many young people, there are so many women, there are so many children. What can we do to provide a solution? There are people who are already doing things, but how can we add to what is being done to improve the situation? I totally like that. Now, I know that one of your mandates is to, um, to cater for the needs of the youth. Now, our topic today is very streamlined into the youth. How can we invest in the power of the youth? Now, taking into consideration how we see a number of youths coming out now to participate in our politics, is that the way forward? Maybe I should speak with the executive director. Well, I think it's a good development that the youths are coming off um, to, part to participate in the political terrain, because actually the youths constitute a significant portion of the population, and that power is something that they're yet to be conscious of and um, activate. So now that they are coming off in the political terrain, it gives them that visibility I think the future belongs to the youth. Okay. Now you're sorry, just in your, interaction, in your interaction with the youth, do you think that youth in Nigeria understand the power we then get? They do not. They are just realizing it. Because I did a quick calculation of 30%. Um, I mean, they use about 32% of the population. That comes to over 60 million. So, and the number of voters in Nigeria, they're about that range. So if all the youths should take a position on the electoral process, then they can easily take over power. Okay, now I want to talk to um, the beautiful lady on my immediate left now concerning the work on that they do for the women and the children. Um, exactly what and what on that they do? Is it just, is it providing financial support or is it actually following through to make sure say they do what they come outside talk say they won't do or they don't feel accomplished for one reason or the other? Exactly how now they take help these women and children? Okay, um, plenty ways, many, many ways where we say they help. Um, one of them is like, you know, we have four focus areas, right? We have the economic area, we have education, we have um, the environment, um, and we have health. So for each of these four groups, when I mentioned, there are programs that we have specifically designed for young people. Um, the education now, we get scholarship program. So we know that there are some people that they want to go to school, but they don't have the means to do that, like they really want to go to school and they are smart, but they don't get means to go to school. So we put them on scholarships. We ha have some people enrolled on our scholarship scheme at the moment. Um, and then for some young people, we'd be like, say, I don't want to go to school. School is not my calling. You know, we have a lot more people like that coming out saying that, I don't want to go to school. You know, I want to be a tailor, I want to be a barber, I want to be a jeweler. Um, for those kind of people, we have our skill acquisition program. Um, and so we run them through trainings, free of charge. You know, we go to communities, really rural communities, where we know that people don't get access to the kind of training we, they need, you know, to develop themselves. We go to those communities, we engage the community stakeholders, and we say, we want to train your youth for free. Give us these young people. Let's train them. So we train them, and then we give them the tools that they need so they give money is a bit tricky mm -hmm. because, I mean, as I am like this, if you give me one millionaire to start a business, 
I'll start the business, but I'll see the kind of ways that I can maximize that one millionaire. If I can use, you know, 990 out of it to achieve the same result, then I'll do that. There's no guarantee that many people will do what they say that they will, no matter how tight your methods are. So yes, we give them the tools that they need. So if, for instance, you learn babbing, you will get the tools to actually start a small business in your community. Um, and then we have health um, programs where we teach young people on sexual and reproductive health. You know, our parents, um, we have moved, I think that we have moved from the generation where you, are, you can't talk to young people about Health sex. sex. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is to educate people and demystify sex. There's no big deal about it, you know. Learn what it is about and know how to make the right choices. That's on health, yes. And then um, the environment. What can you do as a young person to make sure that the environment, the uh, earth lasts for a longer period? You know, we teach them about um, sustainability. We teach them how to recycle. We teach them all those kind of Fantastic. things. Fantastic. Wow. With all this one way they do, it's, it's quite laudable with the project. And it's just been going on for two Yes. Now, for the executive director, I would like to ask you now, with the interaction we don't get with a lot of youth, what is that peculiar problem where you notice a lot of Nigerian youth get? And how your foundation, they take tackle that problem? Well, majorly the problem is that of focus. You need to decide what you want as a youth. You want to go the education route or you want to go the skill acquisition route. So the, the earlier they are able to determine opportunities in the environment, so they can make a decision. So majorly, a lot of times they can't perceive those opportunities because um, perceiving opportunities is a, is a result of training. For example, in every economic condition, there are opportunities, whether there's recession, whether there's a boom. But then you need to train yourself to know where to prospect for those opportunities as a, as a youth. All right, so I, I like the fact that you go to the rural areas to identify those youth that are interested in bettering themselves and giving them the platform for them to be better youth in the society. Now. In your years of practice, of mentorship, of um, giving youths, empowering the youths, what has been the success story? Wow, um, this is where it gets very emotional and where it gets really interesting. Um, young people come to us and many times they are just, I mean, we had a training like three weeks ago and I just saw these young people, the guys with dada, the girls looking at you like, not come near me because that's the kind of environment they've grown up in. And I, had to, I said to them, look, we're here to help you. We're not here to hurt you. And we did trainings for them, um, photography and makeup. And by the end of that particular session, I saw a guy who was who had trained in makeup and he was very eager to go and practice on, there was an old lady there who was like their chaperone. She, he was eager to go and practice on her. And then when he finished, ah, eh, my friend, come, 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 make I try on you. And then he went and you could see the hope and the joy, the fulfillment that he got from learning that skill. He's not the only one. Many of the people that were there, um, you know, the ones that learned photography, for their mind, they don't become professional <laughs> after that training because they started using um, big words. They were talking about aperture and ISO on top phone camera. And I'm very ISO. happy. <laughs> and they were really excited. Yeah. It's the hope that it brings that encourages us to keep going. The hope. You can literally see the joy on their faces when they're done and they get their certificates and it's like, I not go to school, but see my certificates. I do you do like follow makeup. up? Because I just wonder about the photographer and even the makeup artist. You do follow up on these people? Yes, we do follow up with them. So because we don't um, engage them one-on-one, -on -one, we engage them through their community stakeholders. We go through those community stakeholders to find out how they are doing. So the ones who go through the program and they have done really well that we set up, we follow up with them. We have their contact details. We follow up with them. How is business? And then after like a three-month period, we set them up in mentorship programs, you know, so that the people that train you, they are available for you to talk to. If you have any questions, if you're having challenges, if you feel discouraged, 
you can talk to them. So we actually set them up with those people. And then, because we don't have the um, capacity in those technical areas to provide any further support. So we link them up with the people that can teach them. Ah, I go on wedding today. If I say the eyebrow, it will go up. So how can I, you know, fix that in the future? I, I not to know about eyebrow, but I mean, a professional, <laughs> a makeup artist would be able to mm. advise you in that area. Now, um, with this foundation, we're not an NGO, non-government organization. How una they take gather the funds? Because I know, even though una know they, una they try to reduce the way una they give finance in terms of money instead they give tools. But that tools are not some money that they used to buy. They only block up from tree. How now they take manage the finances? I mean, well, we have basically people that support us. Partners. Know, the partners. Oh, into our company. Oh, okay. That's so good. please let's talk about. I, I know see our time is fast gone, but let's talk about this now. Yesterday was International Youth Day. And the theme of yesterday's celebration was safe spaces for youths. Now, the reason why, because they don't discover, say, a lot of youths are actually going through some kind of emotional imbalance, but they don't get a particular avenue for where they can actually express them, themselves without being judged. How OVL, they make this um, platform available for youths to be able to come together and express themselves <coughs> without being judged or feeling guilty? Okay. Um, Mental health is a very serious matter. Um, we have a series on social media on Tuesdays, we call it Mental Health Tuesdays, where we just treat issues on mental health. So people are, like you said, people are depressed. They don't know who to talk to. So we are working on programs that can help people, like, you know, the safe, the safe space. Pieces. We are working on programs with already established nonprofits who have a track record in doing these things. Um, of course, because it's still in the works, I can't disclose their names. But we're working with um, other nonprofits to create like a toll-free, um, a toll-free line, where you know what? My boyfriend just broke up with me. I did depressed. I don't think so. If you go on, just call the number and talk to somebody. My boyfriend wants to sleep with me, but I don't want to. And he said he will break up with me. I don't know what to do. Oh, I just failed my exam. I, I remember that time. Hey, you fail exam. You can't go home. Just you stay know, in school. Just, just stay, stay there. there. Just stay there. <laughs> you know. So call those. You will call. You will be able to call those numbers. We're hoping that you know in the nearest future we're able to launch this, so that we can curb the the um, spread of suicide and depression and to also let people know that depression is real not be not be HIV you know even though it is a mental illness but me, people go through that cycle there's nothing wrong with being depressed it's getting yourself up and out of it that's the most important thing so it's speaking of, like um, of future plans to come up with this project one I don't finish and where people feel actually reach you because I know say people will need more information concerning this and other project one and the work on influence your foundation what are the platforms that people can reach you they can reach us on Instagram, um, on OVL Foundation, on Instagram, uh, Twitter, OVL underscore foundation, mm -hmm. Facebook, OVL Foundation, LinkedIn, OVL Foundation. And then our website is www.ovlfoundationng.org. And then if they want to call the office, um, it's, the number is 0818-392-4649. Thank you so much um, for Thank coming into the studio. Thank you very much. Thank so visit the website to get more education concerning OVL and how did they actually impact the society positively. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.